according to our story, everyone had died and gone up to heaven. And St. Peter appeared on behalf of God and told the people to make two lines. One line only women and the other side all the uh, men. Again, the men were divided into two groups and told to make two lines. One line of men who were controlled by their wives. So we call who are the who are henpecked husbands. <laughs> and the other line was who controlled their wives. On the first line, who were controlled by their wives, the line was long, miles and miles long. While the line where the man who controlled his wife, there was only one man standing. <laughs> so God the Father walked up to him and said, Congratulations, tell all of us how you did it. And he looked up to God the Father and said, I don't know why I am standing here. My wife told me to stand here. <laughs> we are celebrating the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Holy Spirit, and the principal feast of our parish church, the Holy Spirit Church. We are also celebrating our history as well as our culture. Our parish was founded in the year 1886, that is 127 years ago, and the first parish festival honoring Holy Spirit was celebrated the following year. And we remember today the 13th century Saint Queen Isabella of Portugal. If you know the history, originally when the parish was founded, it was totally a Portuguese parish with the Father Governo as the first pastor. And so it was wonderful tradition to celebrate the Feast of the Holy Spirit in a big, solemn way. And the festivity started from the time the parish was founded. Queen Isabella, who lived in the 13th century, was a very, very religious, holy woman. And she had great love for the poor people. And during the 13th century, one particular year, there was great drought. And as a result, there was great famine all over Portugal. And so, this queen would pray and pray. But then, from time to time, she would sneak out with some bread from the table in the palace and distribute to the poor. But then, the officials in the palace were not too happy about it. So she would often hide the bread in the apron and walk and distribute the bread to the poor. And one day, her husband, the king, caught her red-handed and said, you are carrying bread away from our table. And lo and behold, she opened the apron and it was filled with beautiful roses. And it was in the month of January and they are not supposed to be having roses. A miracle had happened. Remembering that particular custom, once Rachel would be uh, crowned a queen, she would be distributing bread to all of us, even though we are not as poor as, as the people of that time. Another tradition is that uh, she also prayed when there was a drought and she offered masses to be celebrated continuously. And if the drought would end, if there would be a greater blessing, she would uh, give her crown to the church. And that was a promise that she made. But believe it or not, on the Feast of Pentecost, three ships arrived in Lisbon Harbor carrying a lot of grain to support and defeat the people. And so she started the tradition of taking out a procession in honor of the Holy Spirit and continued her ministry to the poorest of the poor. Queen Isabella was canonized a saint in the year 1625. There was a priest who was celebrating the Pentecost and he wanted to have a dramatic start of his homily and he declared, come Holy Spirit. But he had made an arrangement with a housekeeper to release a dove from the choir loft so the dove would come flying and flutter around the church and everyone would be so impressed. So the priest stood and said, come O Holy Spirit looked up around, no Holy Spirit coming. So he looked up again to the choir loft, giving some signal to the, uh, to the housekeeper and said, Come, O Holy Spirit. 
Still no dove flying. Then she shouted out, Father, your cat yet up the Holy Spirit. <laughs> well, Holy Spirit is considered by many as a forgotten God because the Holy Spirit is not talked about as much as we would like. But we know that we make the sign of the cross in the name of the triune God and Holy Spirit is always mentioned. Today is actually the birthday of Holy Mother the Church. It was on Pentecost Sunday that the Spirit came over and the church started functioning. Pentecost means the 50th and it is Jewish as well as a Christian tradition. In fact, the story of salvation history is filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. In the gospel, we heard Jesus uh, telling the apostles, receive the Holy Spirit and he breathed upon them the Holy Spirit. In the first reading taken from the Acts of the Apostles, we have a beautiful account of the the first Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, there is mention of a strong driving wind. Then there is the tongues of fire that were dissenting. These are uh, strong powerful elements to show the new life, the new vision, and the new mission that the apostles were given. And they did not remain in the upper room once the Holy Spirit came out. They burst out into the world proclaiming that Jesus is Lord and sharing their enthusiasm, their faith, and the love for God. There are various images in the Bible for Holy Spirit. There is the wind, there is the fire, there is the dove, running water, oil, and so on. These are all elements of movement and energy. The wind blows, the fire burns, dove descends, water flows, Oil penetrates and there is power and there is strength in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is life-giving and saving power of God for us today. Another name for Holy Spirit is paraclete, meaning called to be with. To be with us, to teach us, to convince us and to comfort us. Today is a great day to ask the Holy Spirit to rekindle in us the spirit of new life, the spirit of enthusiasm, a fire of God's love. I'd like to share with you a Mexican poem uh, written by a mystic in Mexico by name Amado Nervo. It's very beautiful. Alone we are only a spark, but in the spirit we are a fire. Alone we are only a string, but in the spirit we are a liar. Alone we are only an anthill, but in the spirit we are a mountain. Alone we are only a drop, but in the spirit we are a fountain. Alone we are only a feather, but in the spirit we are a wing. Alone we are only a beggar, but in the spirit we are a king. Let me end with a beautiful prayer from Cardinal Newman, which should be our prayer today and always. Come, O Holy Spirit, Make our ears to hear, make our eyes to see, make our mouths to speak, make our hearts to seek, make our hands to reach out and touch the world with your love.